T and T cell towers. They uh, have a proposal for a couple of additional towers, and uh, I want to turn it over to the folks from Aerosmith. Thank you very much, Advisor, and town board members. For um, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm Don Ross. I'm from the law firm of Phillips Lytle in Albany, and joining us from Aerosmith Development is Margaret Smith. She happens to be the CEO of Aerosmith Development, so she's uh, coming all the way down. We just came down both from the Albany area tonight to be with you. Mary Ann Terry, also from Aerosmith, is joining us tonight. Uh, all three of us, in various capacities, represent AT&T Mobility. Uh, AT&T, obviously, is, uh, as you pointed out, is looking to uh, build a couple of uh, new sites. Uh, we wanted to come here tonight to give you a sense of what we're looking at and uh, just to give you some information about what the, you know, the sites would and what we propose that they would involve. Um, it's obviously not set in stone, but uh, you know, we're here to also answer your questions, get your input, involve the community as much as we can. This isn't, you know, we're not, uh, this isn't a take it or leave it proposition. Well, no, it's not. Uh, right. No, obviously. I, I, I just want you to know that we're not presenting it as such. No, either, um, thank so, you. So it's not, the, you know, it's not the spirit in which we're coming here tonight. No, we so, appreciate that. So, um, uh, just to give you a sense of the addresses where they both are, that's at, one's at 5 Alexander Boulevard and the other's at 49 Tucker Drive. We'll give you some aerial maps in about two okay. seconds. So I'll just proceed on to the next slide. Uh, first, we'll start with the Tucker Drive site. This is located at the, the proposed site is located at the uh, town's uh, uh, highway department garage up on Tucker Drive. It's probably about, I would say, less than a, you're probably about an eighth of a mile south of the intersection with Van Wagner Road. Uh, the, z the zoning district is IH, but it is adjacent to a residential district. There are residences behind it. And if I, as the crow flies, I can say it's probably about six or 700 feet uh, behind those uh, behind the property is a, is, a, is a housing development. It's also an apartment complex somewhat more behind it down the street. And the, the rest of the area is generally, as you probably all know, pro uh, a commercial a commercial area. There's a store. There's a couple of storage uh, 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 facilities there. There's the uh, WKIP's towers and the Clear Channel uh, uh, studios are also on that street. Uh, this is again just gives you a sense of the uh, the uh, you know aerial map taken from our our friends at Google Maps. Uh, this shows the existing coverage and uh, just to give you a sense of the. The color scheme here, what AT&T's, you know, what they call their RF engineers, the guys who sit in the room and, and determine where there's gaps in coverage for AT&T's customers, uh, you know, they make these determinations obviously based on, you know, scientific stuff. And also there are AT&T customers have the opportunity to mark dead spots with an app that's called Mark the Spot. So based on that kind of uh, both primary and secondary information, they're able to ascertain where there are. Hmm. Coverage gaps, and so the idea the idea is to find you know, to, to find a spot that ideally fills those coverage gaps when you take into account things like aesthetic compatibility, hmm. compatibility with land use, uh, the ability to lease the property, the ability to obviously should the permits be granted to actually build the site on the uh, on on the property in question. So, just to break down these colors a bit, red and orange are what we would call less than ideal coverage uh, for in-car, in-building uh, situation, especially when you're dealing with a suburban density like this, the area that we're seeking to cover, you want to aim for what we would call the yellow and the green. Those are better signal coverages because the, uh, the buildings, obviously, are in, in a suburban setting typically tend to be, you know, both of the commercial and residential variety tend to be a bit, a bit sturdier, a bit newer, and uh, it, you, need, you need stronger single pre signal pre penetration to get into those areas. So proposed tower would give us coverage like this, the area around uh, uh, the Tucker Drive site. Now, it's, it, it says here, uh, uh, you'll notice Crestwood Park, NSB Crestwood Park. That's the name that AT&T gives mm -hmm. to the towers, but it's, it's an internal thing. Uh, Tucker Drive is what, we, what we've been calling the site in our dealings with uh, the folks in, in, in the town so far. So as you can see, that the areas that were uh, having less than optimal coverage will now have you know, what we'll call a full set of bars within their homes or within their cars. 
uh, you know, both existing 3G customers and folks who are using smartphones. I mean, the idea is obviously to give everybody a, a better, uh, a higher quality of service in that area, but also to, especially for the 4G, because with the smartphones, you need to be able to have extended uh, or better uh, and faster data download quantity and, uh, and obviously call quality. Uh, Alexander Boulevard site. Uh, oh, but we're back, we're going back up again. I will draw your attention then to the TV. Uh, Alexander Boulevard site is uh, it's another uh, town highway maintenance property. It's in a bit, uh, the residential neighborhood is uh, zoned R20. Uh, it's just north northwest of Vassar Road. Uh, again, it's another area where a coverage gap has been identified. And with our proposed tower with the antenna array, et cetera, on it, this would be the, uh, uh, again, yellow and green being good, mm -hmm. and red, orange, red, and orange and red being less good. Uh, green and yellow really puts you to the point where you're serving your customers with a full set of bars. Um, you know, in our discussions uh, with, with, with uh, Neil and Eric from the town, uh, we were uh, asked to provide some examples of tower design options. Mm -hmm. So I, now I'm going to show you some slides of uh, what AT&T typically uses. And this is the you know, sort of mm -hmm. default design, the classic mm -hmm. design monopole. Of course, it's, you know, they're not exactly things of beauty. They're, I guess the euphemism you'd use is they're functional. Uh, it's a galvanized steel uh, uh, tower. Uh, you know, for both sites, we're proposing tentatively a, a height of 120 feet. Uh, typically, what you'll see, you see this triangular shape at the top of the tower. Uh, antennas are arranged it, it, uh, at Casper Kill or the Alexander Boulevard site. You're going to have nine <laughs> antennas there, uh, three aiming in each direction. What we, what we would call uh, azimuths, you would have 360 degrees of coverage from the nine antennas at the top of the tower. When you're looking at the other side at Tucker, at Tucker Drive, you're looking at a situation where there'd be six antennas in the associated equipment. Pull the mic a little closer. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. You'd have six antennas uh, at the top of the tower at, um, at Tucker Drive. This is basically just what they look like. Uh, you know, typically they're galvanized steel. So they can be painted into. I mean, if you, I don't know what colors you've seen them painted in. I mean, various colors. You can have them painted to uh, white to kind of blend in with the skyscape. Sometimes they tend to stand out more when mm -hmm. they're painted white or light blue. Um, sometimes they're brown. Um, and typically the galvanized steel just sort of <coughs> weathers with the natural surrounding. Do, do these towers have three antennas, or is that six? It's kind of hard to tell. Well, this particular tower is actually, actually located in Syracuse. Uh, we just used it because it looked like a nice, clear example where we could get a good picture on a good day. This tower has on a one, two, three, four, five, six antennas. antennas. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, the array that's on the top, that platform, is going to hold anywhere from six to 12 antennas. Could be up there at one time. Now, to give you this, this tower only holds one, what we'll call a rad center or array of, of, of uh, antennas. What most monopoles are designed to hold at least four and sometimes as many as five uh, uh, mm -hmm, rad mm -hmm. centers or levels of, you know, in other words, the carry, other carriers can and share. other, yeah, yeah. can rent out, rent out space on the tower, so to speak, right. and install the, uh, the arrays. Uh, Going, you know, going downward, starting at the top, obviously, and it. What would you say? The, the it's about ten feet of separation. Ten, ten feet of separation is <laughs> typical. Okay. Um, so that's what I mean. You've seen these; they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. That's what a monopole looks like. Uh, here's an example. One of the better examples, mm -hmm. um, and these can, you know, beauties in the eye of the beholder. But this is what we call in the industry a monopine. Uh, some folks. You know, pejoratively call it a Franken pine. I've heard those too. Uh, it, it, again, it's uh, you know, this may be. It, obviously, it's up to obviously it's up to the town board. But this is the kind of thing that more, might more typically fit in in a setting where you have a lot more coniferous trees, deciduous trees, and the like. Something like the Alexander Boulevard neighbor, which is a lot more has a lot more mature trees around it. Um, you know, it, it basically has the same uh, advantages as a monopole in terms of, of coverage and in terms of ability to uh, to uh, use, you know, have multiple carriers on there. Um, 
You'll notice get, that that pole is actually brown. Mm -hmm. uh, you okay. know, so. And this is located, this particular <coughs> tower, it's a tower that AT&T owns in Saratoga Springs, just, just mm -hmm. east of the Northway exit up by Wilton Mall. I don't know if mm -hmm. familiar you are with that particular neck of the woods. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's better looking than the one that's off the Taconic. That one's really, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously not a, a real tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, it, a yeah. lot of it depends on setting. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, some look more real than others. This mm -hmm. probably yes. is what we would call the latest and greatest example of a monopine that we've been using. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and I'll take you to the third example that we typically use, and I know that these are, this example is in use at at least one site in the, in the town of Poughkeepsie, if not more. Uh, I know that one of my colleagues worked on a, a permitting for a flagpole at or near the South Hills Mall a few years ago. Okay. Uh, but this flagpole happens to be located in Johnson City, right outside of Binghamton. Uh, again, this was just, we tried to get some pictures of the best examples that we had. Uh, and it, it is it is a flagpole. Uh, it's a little wider than the typical flagpole you might see in a school or a town hall or a police station, but uh, it does obviously hold a flag, and it can hold cell antenna, uh, hold wireless antennas. They are <coughs> unlike the arrays that you saw with the monopine or a monopole. They're flush against the tower, meaning that they're not protruding. They're stacked actually vertically mm -hmm. along the uh, along the tower. Now, the flip side of that is that you know the way you have to mount. The antennas, um, only so many carriers can go up there. So what happens sometimes is that in situations where there's flagpoles, there's, the, there's a situation where there's sort of a last man out. There might be one or two carriers who can't get on the tower. And so then they start petitioning the municipalities to get on other, on other sites. The other, the other issue is technical, too, is that when you stack these antennas, uh, it's harder to get that uh, optimal signal quality. Uh, that you that you will have from uh, you know a typical array that you might have on a monopine or a monopole. In other words, as I understand, and you can yeah. correct me at any point when you have, mm -hmm. you're going to stack antennas instead of three, three, and three. You're going to have them stacked three, three, and then three on top of each other, and so that tends to create some signal loss. What also happens, not to get too deep in the weeds technically, but when you have these antennas and you put, what we put on the back of them when they're on a monopole or a monopine is something called an RRU. It's a remote radio head. It's a signal booster. It, it, mm -hmm. Because you have, coax, you have loss of signal from coax cables. When they come out the back of an antenna that go down the pole mm -hmm. to a base station, you know, you're going to have some signal loss. It's just natural. Mm -hmm. What the RRUs do is they tend to enhance the signal at the from the transmitter to the antenna, so you don't have as much signal loss. Um, and uh, as I understand it, it's a little harder to uh, to make those work in a flagpole scenario because they they can't be flush mounted. They can't be it uh, put into the tower. They will have to go down mm -hmm. on the on the, on the shelter or the base station that you see here. Now. One, one other disadvantage of flagpoles, and I just, and I don't, and I don't want you to think that I'm against flagpoles. I just want to get you, give you a sense of what the pros and cons are, and there are a few more cons with flagpoles. I mean, the best thing about them is that they probably look the best of the three, uh, but the, the other, uh, the other downside with the flagpoles is AT and T and the other carriers are using newer and heavier antennas uh, to do the LTE uh, or 4G. Uh, uh, build out, so to speak, and some of these just don't apparently fit in, in flagpoles. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is, there is a downside. There is, that is the other downside. Um, but that is, the, those are the three you know, options. I mean, monopines and flagpoles are typically called in the industry stealth options because obviously it's, it's something, it's pretending to be something, or it has a dual function, or it's pretending to be something that it's, that it's not. So, um, you know, this slide just uh, gives you a sense of what typically comes next. I mean, obviously, there's going to be a lot of questions that have to be answered, a lot of forms that have to be filled out, a lot of meetings and discussions, and mm -hmm. we'll take what you give us. I mean, we're ready and open to, to hear, you know, to any questions. But since these are town-owned properties, that, you know, the, 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 presumably that the lease, you know, any terms of the lease would be conducted with uh, the, you know, the t members of the uh, you, the town supervisor, and the members of the town board, and then at some point we'd have to obviously get some sort of, you know, either probably presumably in a parallel track. And I understand from from Neil and Eric that would that the land use approvals would likely come from from the town board as well. So, 
you know, uh, timing for approvals, we'll just, you know, we'll mm -hmm. obviously leave that in your hands and to get a sense of you know, how you want to proceed. And you know, if we answer your question satisfactorily tonight, then maybe we can get mm -hmm. that, uh, get those steps going. Uh, I, when I talk about, when I talk about typical submissions here, this is not an exhaustive list. This isn't, you know, okay, here's what we give you and that's it. It's just, just to give the community and give the board members a flavor of what we typically provide. But it's not exhaustive. This mm -hmm. is including but not limited to, okay? You know, visual impact. Um, I would presume that the town may want balloon tests or photo simulations. Something that says, okay, here's what it looks like before mm -hmm. from certain vantage points, and here's what it's going to look like after from certain vantage points. And you tell us what the vantage points you want us to take the pictures. Okay. You know, in other words, you're going to say, go here, take a picture, go here, take a picture. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're going to provide construction drawings that are going to show what the site typically looks like. Um, you know, they tend to be rather stock. I mean, the typical lease parcel is about 10,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. You have an equipment shelter at the bottom. I mean, they tend to run in size from about 12 by 12 to about 12 by 20. Uh, they come, the shelters themselves can come in all varieties and we'll be open to any suggestions as to aesthetics there too, of course. I mean, they, they're not pretty to look at. I mean, they typically look like a garden shed, but they can be uh, acclimated or, or made to blend in with the natural environment at your direction. Um, interference, we have to obviously provide, we typically provide, you know, the, the, the body that's giving the approvals with some sort of statement that we're not going to be interfering with uh, any sort of, uh, any other equipment that's on the, prem, uh, any other equipment that's in the vicinity or with other carriers. Obviously, I think we'd probably have to do some sort of AMD tuning on the tower at Tucker Drive because of the the presence of the uh, AM and 10 array across the street. So that's the kind of stuff that our engineers will obviously take into account. Uh, propagation plots, those, are, those would be a bit more uh, elaborate versions of the before and after maps with different colors that I showed you. In other okay. words, saying there's a coverage gap, this fills the gap, here's why. Okay. Um, a statement from our engineers that says the tower can hold this stuff without collapsing and falling down. Typically these monopoles are designed to fail in such a way that they can I mean, most of them can fail and you know, bend and buckle upon themselves. They don't have to. Mm. They certainly can be designed not to go, you know, timber and so on. Uh, environmental assessment form, that's a, you know, that's a, a no-brainer. Obviously, that's something that you, you, the town board would need to, uh, you know, we've, we've had some substantial revisions in the EAF over the last six months. Um, I'll leave it to our, to our friends at planning whether we need to go with long form or short form, but uh, you know, either way, we'll obviously provide you all the information that you need to make a, uh, a decision as to the environmental impact if and when the time comes. Um, okay. So that's the, that's the short version of the presentation. And, um, we appreciate you know, we're, it. We're ready to answer any questions you have. All right. We appreciate you coming in. Um, I think both these spots are some real questions as to you know the visual impact so is there anybody on the board who any questions tonight pole is 120 feet high on the alexander site the average tree height is about 60 or 70 feet so this is going to stick up above the tree height in a residential area by 50 feet you're nodding your head yes. You're well, I mean, I, that's what it's I, mean I haven't sat down and measured the, measured the trees, but I have toured the site, and I, I know Margaret has too. So, I mean, I, it seems about, you know, you know, without obviously pending actual measurement of the tree canopy, and we do have engineers who can do those kind of things, as I'm sure. Just Basically, it's going to pick up in a residential area above the tree lines, above the tops of the trees. It, yeah, and then it's just a question of how, from, from what perspective. You're to asking to, to let it go there to stick up 50 or 60 feet above the trees, right? At this point, that's, okay. that's the proposal. Um. Anybody else? All right, we appreciate you coming in tonight and uh, giving us this presentation. You know, you'll, you know, we'll be in touch, or if you want to call into the town, you know, we'll, uh, the two councilmen are on vacation night. That's sure. why there's two empty seats. But, you know, we'll talk as a group and see if there's any uh, desire to move forward with you at these two locations. And, and you know, we'll be in touch. Or you can contact us, give us a, a week or so. Would, and would the, con would the um, sh should we reach out to you directly or should we deal with Neil? And uh, if you've been dealing with Neil, you can continue yeah. to deal with okay. the planning department and we'll relay our 
desire, you know, to them one way or another. Can, can I, if I could just add, you <coughs> yeah. know, as a person who goes out and looks for a location mm-hmm. to, to meet AT&T's <coughs> needs, yeah. I mean, these, these appear to be good locations because, number one, they're town-owned properties and the town mm-hmm. would get the revenue. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that we're, you know, would work with you on what's the best mm-hmm. aesthetic fit that will make everybody happy. Um, you know, I just think it, we, we really are trying. There's a need. There's a hole. Mm-hmm. There's, we're mm-hmm. going to have to come up with something. And so we're really trying to come sure. to the town with the yeah need. we appreciate and, that and you know and the revenue opportunity yeah as well. i understand what you're saying yep. and we and in many other towns we've also mm-hmm. um are amendable to any kind of e911 equipment that you may need okay. providing for space on the tower sure. for that as well sure so yeah. just to keep that in yeah. mind. no that's thank you appreciate that and, and you know and to answer <clears throat> mr carlos's concern i mean there are in it, you pointed out that there's a concern about height. Now, of course, you know the simulations, the photo simulations or balloon tests can also address from what angles you'll actually be able to see it. I mean, obviously, from some angles, you're going to be seeing it above the tree line. There's no question about it. But there may be others that y- you, you may not. Um, tower heights can be adjusted as well. I mean, it comes to a point where there's diminishing returns when you adjust the height, but there's also, there can all, I mean, again, this isn't, like we said, about take it or leave it. It's not a take it or leave it proposition. 120 is the ideal height to provide the coverage. But you know, there's, we're open to discussion and feedback. So just wanted to give you that sense. Okay, great. We appreciate it very much. Thank time. you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, I think we'll move to committee reports. And uh, okay. then we'll move on to the town board meeting. Um, finance, Jay. Nothing to report. All right. Uh, fire advisory again. Jay, is there? Um, no, Lenny's in the middle of setting up a meeting with us. You know, being it's the department <laughs> and a couple board members, it's a little harder to get together than just a few board members. So okay. we're working on a meeting. Okay. Government operations. Nothing to report. Uh, land use and planning. Mike or Ann, anything? Land use and planning. Well, we're gonna have a meeting next week. Due to the snow last week, we missed it. This week, okay. we missed it with vacation. Right. So next week. Okay. Uh, personnel. Uh, nothing to report. Recreation. Yeah, we met this morning with um, the bidders on the lawn mowing, and we're pretty confident that the guy that we have right now will, should work out fine. So hopefully, next meeting we'll be able to put his bid on the agenda. And also, while we're on that, the seniors we're gonna have a senior fair day. We decided tonight it's gonna be May seventeenth. Great. So we're gonna have some information going out about that. We're gonna work with Dial Ride. Uh, getting the seniors there, and we're also working on dial ride to try to make the service a little better for the seniors, too. Perfect. Uh, and then seniors. Just got covered it. it. Yep. Uh, techni- technology and equipment? Nothing to report. And infrastructure? We had a snow meeting. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it was a, a lot of, we had a lot of those. So it was a snow meeting. All right. Next meeting is, is uh, first week of next, week of next month. All right. And uh, while I'm at it, uh, it would fit in the community of the hall. I actually asked uh, Superintendent of Highways to be here tonight. Unfortunately, we're not broadcasting. I was hoping we would. Uh, we met yesterday, uh, the two of us, Jim Wadowitz, and basically we were talking about the winter weather, you know, um, where we are with the budget, uh, if we're having any trouble with uh, getting saw. So I just asked Mark to come in, give us a little rundown of, of what he's done. It's you know, unfortunately, Ben, uh, maybe it's is a good old winter, but of late it isn't a winter that we're used to or we've had, you, you know, in the recent years. So uh, we're battling. I think we're holding our own at this point, but Mother Nature's uh, still roaring. So, Mark, <laughs> it, it's been a tough one. Uh, yeah. We're all getting a little worn out, and uh, we're double what we've used for most years. Um, we, are, we have enough salt. We're okay. We got more this week. Uh, we did get another about another 350 ton in in the last two days, so we mix it. And with what I have, we we have about right around 1,200 ton on hand, so we're in good shape with that. But uh, normal year, you know, we we usually put out under 3,000 ton. This year, we're going to hit over 6,000 ton that we're going to put out between salt and sand. So how so, much do we usually on an average year? On an average year, 2,500 to 3,000, somewhere in there. And this year, we're on. We're I've. I've Ordered this year just in salt alone. I've ordered 4,500 ton. Mm. I started with a three-quarters full shed. 
we had a pretty good supply that we've had. Um, and, and sand, I've almost ordered about 2,000 tons, so we're, it's been tough. We've sold it 25 times since the second week in December, mm -hmm. which is an amazing amount. Normal years, we sold 15 times the most. So and it's and it's not over. We're going to go a solid tonight month at to, least. the morning. Yeah, we'll Try be on a, on a snow on average snowstorm. We salt before and we salt afterwards. So with this storm coming, we're going to salt that twice. We're talking about maybe a little clipper coming over the weekend. I hope that goes away. It seems like it might. So we could easily do another three times before Monday. And it's just every when we salt, we use about 180 ton. We put out each time between 180 to 200 ton each time we go out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, the fuel prices we our our fuel we're you know, we're, we're way way more than last year. Uh, calcium, we spray our, as you know, we spray our material with calcium that comes off. We Normal year, we, we purchase about 15,000 gallons. We're about 25,000 gallons this year. So we're still holding on to budget, but yes, it's going to be tricky for December of next year, November, December next year. Yeah. So just to yeah, let you know that yeah. we're, we're going to be in a little tight spot. We, you're, uh, yeah, we, we took a look at the budget. The best we, you know, as of the end of January is what we, you know, have some pretty solid numbers in terms of expenses. We're, we're, we're okay at this point, but I think it, the reason I want Mark to be here, it's important to know, you know, if we continue with this kind of weather for another month, um, it, it could put us in a tough bind come, you know, next fall because you, we often forget winters, January through March, but then it's November, December. And this past December, we had two storms, which we were in good shape budget-wise for 13. We were going to save, you know, put money towards the, yeah. the fund balance. But we had two storms in December, both on the weekends, which impact, you know, the pay scale. And yeah. uh, that took away any yeah. savings we were going to have. We were within budget, but we didn't have the savings. So um, Yeah, we did Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve. We've been getting them all. Yeah, we seem to be you having know. our share of them. So, yeah. uh, um, and just uh, again, as uh, many people are, we we have we did win the state or the state the county uh, shared services bid for the new salt spreaders. Um, right. Three hundred fifty-seven thousand. We're sharing with High Park. Um, we you know won that bid and they announced in the fall, so we didn't have time for this this year. But right. once spring hits, assuming uh, we do have a spring, we'll uh, <laughs> get to work on getting those spreaders ordered and, and getting them in. And they we project to save you know up to potentially a third, a third of right. the of amount material, of salt right. we use right now. So. We, we have two of them, and we've been experimenting with the two we have, mm -hmm. and it does work. You know, we have, you almost have a little different procedure what we do. We're able to salt why we plow with those because they, you don't have to turn them on and off. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you can really reduce the amount that goes out. So while we're plowing, I don't know if anybody's ever been behind a state truck. You can see the state trucks are always, the material is always coming out. It's just a little bit, nice little trickle that comes out. And now we have the ability to do that with two of our trucks. And by next fall, hopefully we can do it with them all. So it'll, it should should make things a lot better. So we're hoping to save saw and you know, which would be better for the environment as well. Up to a th about a third. Up to a hope. third. Yeah, we're hoping to save about a third of the material. And we'll see. You know, but it could be as much as a third. Yeah. Yeah. And the salt's not cheap. We're paying fifty-three dollars a ton right now, mm -hmm. so it's not cheap. Hmm. It's come down from years prior. It's it's been up. You know, near seventy at times. It's come. It's gotten better, but it's not worth. Yeah. You know, ten years ago we bought it for twenty-five. Hmm. So. Any, That's enough. But do you have any questions for Mark? No, just you're doing a fantastic job, Mark. Nothing but compliments this year. Thank you. Know, you. The roads, I think, even with the cold weather being what it was, to see black roads is a pleasure. I mean, with some of the hills, as bad as it's been, going down to the train station, it's been kept clear. The guys have done a great job. The residents are even coming in and saying how good of a job they're seeing from the help this year. Thank you. Yeah, the guys yeah. are all working hard. There's no doubt about no. it. I mean, they got to so. be exhausted because you see them out there all hours of the night. <laughs> it, gets, it gets a little tiresome. Oh, right. you know they sleep in that building. <laughs> no, they go out and they do the sand. He'll mm -hmm. let them have a few hours of sleep rather than go home and come back. Right. They bunk right down there, sleeping on the stay. floors on bed. This really happens. <laughs> then there. he wakes them back up and sends <clears throat> them back out to plow. Yeah. I find it amazing. Well, if if it gets so bad, you know, some of the guys, you know, they live twenty minutes away or so. If you, you know, I don't want them to crash. You know, the road. You know, if it, if they're st still going overnight, you know, we can take a little break. We try to get everybody home safe, you know, on a typical storm. And if it's going to go through the night, you know, we'll we'll take a break from like nine to two or nine to three. But if you know, for everybody to try to go home, you never know what's going to happen. You know, on their, you know, they mm -hmm. just ever, you know, a lot of them don't have four wheel drive. I don't want to, 
get in a car accident or something, and you know it's safer that way. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we're there, get, and we're yeah, ready to go. They're a committed group of guys. Yeah, so we appreciate no it. No doubt. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. Okay, Thanks, Mark. thank you. That's all we had for a committee of the whole. So I make a motion to end the committee of the whole meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I make a motion to open the special <clears throat> town board meeting. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll run through the agenda quickly, and um, then we'll take questions on agenda items. It's not a very long agenda. Item number one is reappoint uh, Board of Ethics members. Two is to appoint a new Historic Preservation Commission member. Three is to appoint a Zoning Board of Appeals member. Four is to authorize a supervisor to sign contract with T.G. Elliott. Uh, this is for the Senior Center sliding door that we've, we've discussed for a while. Five is to retain Don McGrath to um, give a, an appraisal for a sewer line easement. This is related to the uh, Country Club sewer job. Uh, six is to memorialize the town's objection to a uh, uh, corporate tax change that's in the governor's uh, proposed budget. Six is to authorize supervisor sign the stop D DWI agreement. Uh, <coughs> I'd like to make a motion to take questions on agenda items. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anybody here to speak to agenda items? Mr. Armstrong? Joe Armstrong, um, you've got the number four, the contract for the sewer. No, I'm sorry. Next one down. Five. The appraisal for the sewer line easement. What can yeah. you uh, explain a little bit of that? For that job, um, we're going to need an easement to uh, uh, neighbor's property. Um, so this is to get an idea. Typically, when you negotiate these easements, you know, you end up with a, a dollar amount that, that someone is given for the, you know, the value of that easement. This is to help us better determine what that value might be before we start, is that, you know. Is that the one from the, the old plant down to the connection that they may make at yeah. South Road? Mm-hmm. It's related, yeah. be in a different spot from where the line runs now? Uh, I think it's fairly close to where it you is. You mean with the road that goes up there? Yeah. It's going to run basically parallel to the road down to that corner because that's where the pipe is underneath Route 9. So there's no pipe running from the old plant down there now? No, no. There's no pipe running down there. The pipe runs from the cul-de-sac, I think it's Pam, Yeah. at the end over to the plant. Right. Okay. Then but when a plant does its job, where does the excess water go? goes into there. There's a little there's a, creek there. There's a creek there. Or just dumped right into the creek. Right. Short so line after it's treated. Yep. So the plan is to go about halfway between the cul-de-sac on Pam to where the plant is, about in the middle of the property, and put a small pump station, and then it'll make a turn and come down the hill to Route 9. They're telling me it's about a half, maybe 0.6 of an acre, because it's 30 feet across times that length. And we need to know the value because you have to... Is that going to go under the road to hook up to the before it goes across Route Nine? Yeah, it's going to go underneath Nine because yeah. they dug up a spot by Route Nine. There's a nine. pipe under there. They were looking for the yeah. the pipe to make sure it was in fact there that's and I thought, in good that, shape. That's why I thought there was a connection from the old sewer plant down there already. No, what is that pipe that's down there? I don't know what that is. Uh, it's empty. It's a pipe they make just so they can make connections under there over the times when it went under the road. It was just a barren pipe. It was, put in there. it was put in there for that reason. They it's, don't know where it goes to before they can hook up to it from Route 9 back? It's not a sewer pipe. It's more like a tunnel. It's, you know, it's, it's basically an open, a, it's an open, open tunnel. There's nothing in it. It's so that they have to hook a sewer line in. They can use that they to go through. They can slide it through there yeah. kind of thing? Oh, okay. Yeah, just instead of having to bore through Route 9, they put it in but when that, they did Route 9. I asked a question about wouldn't it be better to come out the back side <coughs> of the plant and go straight across to the pump station? And the answer that I got was 300000 plus to tunnel underneath Route 9. So that doubles the cost to do that. So this seems to be the least expensive because we don't have to dis disturb Route 9. We're going underneath through a tunnel that's already there or a pipe right. that's already there. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I thought there was already a, a yeah, pass through under Route 9 already. There is. And then and there, then they had to go back up to the other pump on the other side of Route 9 right. to pump it down. Mm -hmm. 
but this is the only project right now that's being worked on for this project? <laughs> Is this the first uh, thing think, and then go from there? I think there's design work being done for the, you know, the dispose, you know, the decommission of the sewer plant that's there now. And I asked that question, and the question is was answered <coughs> by when they're done, there'll be grass there. Whoopee! Nobody can see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The thanks, deer, thanks. the deer can eat it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Anything else? Yes. Phyllis. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Phyllis Capone, and up until Tuesday night, I had been um, providing um, services to the zoning board mm -hmm. as a member for the sixth ward. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that position for a while. I have learned a tremendous amount of information by attending in services as well as the meetings. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to say that I have enjoyed that time. I've learned a tremendous amount. I feel that I have represented the sixth ward um, pretty fairly and judiciously, and I would like to continue in that position. We, and I, for, from our point of view, we appreciate your, your, Time on the board, Phyllis, and 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 I've talked to Phyllis a, a couple times. You know, it's it's not often when we have a, a a board member whose term is up that we have anybody interested uh, because I've asked. And when Phyllis joined the the zoning board, I was the one who asked Phyllis if she'd consider it. And Phyllis is a perfect example of someone who. Um, you know, didn't know what she was getting into, probably was somewhat hesitant uh, when I first spoke to her about it, but now has learned a great deal about the town of Poughkeepsie, learned uh, a lot more about our zoning laws, knows a little bit, you know, I guess probably a lot more about how the town functions and, and works, and it's, it's a great opportunity for residents to become involved, to learn as, as Phyllis has, and um, uh, become a more active part of the community. So when we have an opportunity to get others involved as as you were phyllis we we hate to pass that up because it's so hard to find people who are willing to commit the time and to serve uh as you have but we definitely appreciate the time you you have spent on the zoning board and we've actually ann and i spoke and you know we're thinking of ways to keep you involved and there's some there are possibilities there okay thank, thank you. you anybody else jim Yeah, uh, Jim Talley, 35 Park Avenue, and uh, I'm here as the chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, the town has a, every, or the town board has every right to appoint new members uh, when an existing um, member's term has expired, and so I'm not, I'm not questioning that. Um, I was a little disappointed that uh, I first learned of this when I saw uh, last week's meeting agenda. But let that be as it may. Um, I just wanted to say that um, uh, Phyllis has been an excellent member. Um, her uh, attendance record is, is perfect or, or very nearly so. Um, she comes to each meeting. She's prepared. She's gone on the field trips, um, uh, read through the applications. She's been fair, thoughtful in her uh, questions and um, has a very nice touch with with applicants. Um, people come before us; they're nervous about things. Um, she has a very calm, reassuring manner. It would be a pity to lose her, um, but as I say, that's the decision that that you um, are entitled to make. Um, I would remind um, many of you. I've spoken with you um, about it. Uh, the zoning board would benefit from having another alternate member um, and uh, because of illnesses, vacations, people gone, and it's important to have a full uh, panel at each of the meetings. Uh, we have one um, alternate at, at present who, uh, who actually is a, is a voting member virtually every meeting. It would be nice to have a second alternate. Um, Phyllis would be superb at mm -hmm. that, and I would urge you to 
um, consider uh, making that appointment. Thank you. Yeah, I agree, Jim, and that's what Ann and I spoke about, and I, I, I happen to agree with you. And I hope we have an atmosphere, let me just say this, in the town of encouraging uh, resident participation. And I know people get positions and, and even town board positions and love them and fall in love with them and, and so on, but I, I hope we just are able to maintain an atmosphere of um, you know, what's uh, inclusiveness and an attitude where, you know, an atmosphere where we encourage people to to serve and welcome when they do. And even if, you know, hey, as we know, and Jim, you know, you've been, you've been around a long time too, you know, sometimes people try it and they don't like it and that's fine. You know, I always tell them, look, and let's I, try things. I, and I completely support the idea of, of, getting as much yeah. uh, public participation as possible. Um, I just also note that um, for the zoning board, um, also for the planning board, for the town board, there is a learning curve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is, and, absolutely. And it can be a pretty big one. Yep. Uh, and uh, so I, I, I hate to see... Um, the kind of investment that it that it takes to become knowledgeable and proficient uh, to go to waste, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so um, you know, do, do think seriously ab about the alternate. Yeah, proposal. we will. It we would, it would make uh, the zoning board function um, much better. Yeah, um, and it would it would enable us to make use of of the mm -hmm. skills that Phyllis has developed. Yeah, and while you're here, we'll, we you know we'll have the opportunity, and, and we do you know we appreciate what you do on the board, running the board. Uh, it's not an easy job, I know. And uh, last, but you, this week wasn't bad. Last I was month watching was one <laughs> meeting. That, what was it? Quarter to eleven when I turned the TV off. I said, "I'm going to sleep. I don't know how long they're going to be it there." But to, it went to eleven. We appreciate what all <laughs> yeah. of you do. Yeah. So. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Jim. <clears throat> Anybody else? Uh, yes. Then Marley, you can be next. <clears throat> My name is Paul Leakey. I am the alternate on the on the board, and I appreciate that. Um, I would agree with everything that Jim had to say, but I might add something else. Since there is such a learning curve to this, and Phyllis is already on board and 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 does an exceptionally good job, she asks thoughtful, probing questions. She's a caring individual. She pays a lot of attention to the issues and what's going on. I would encourage you to keep her as a as a zoning board member and perhaps make this other person the alternate. You know that it's a shorter period of time. There's also, you know, that a member who has an issue uh, being able to attend right now. So this might be a way for you to bring that person up to speed gently without jettisoning somebody. Um, so I would encourage you to, uh, to go for that route instead. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Marlene. Um, I have a question. I sure. saw the agenda from last week, okay. and there was another name on for the zoning board. Mm -hmm. Is that name gone? Cause it yes, was... name's gone. Okay, because I was going to speak to that, but it's it's not going to appear anymore. Well, it's not on the agenda. I can tell you. I can. I know All I can tell you is not on tonight's agenda, and the the gentleman has withdrawn his name. He has withdrawn his name. Yes. Okay, because I was going to speak to that. That's why okay, I was well, asking. Okay, well, it's not on the agenda, so. But I also <laughs> want to say that I do watch the board meetings, all of them, zoning, planning, and everything. When you're not here. You hear it a lot of them. <laughs> not, not a planning and zoning. Uh, right. <laughs> not a planning and zoning. But I wanted to speak <clears throat> to this uh, lady whose name has come up. I've mm -hmm. seen her, and I've mm -hmm. seen that board, and they are very compatible, and I think they do a good job. They do a good job. I didn't know that she would, her term was up, but I would really stress the importance of keeping her around, because yes. I sat on the planning board for 10 years, and I know That's how right. hard I it is. I forgot you were on the planning board, yeah. <laughs> to get oriented mm -hmm. to that is what I'm saying, and it is a tough job. Mm -hmm. And you just don't come on and in six months learn what you're doing. It takes a while. Yep. And so I would encourage you to keep her around. Thanks, Marlene. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? <clears throat> Seeing no one, I make a motion to resume the rules. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Be resolved the Town Board of Tampa Kips is hereby a reappoint William Polgren to the Board of Ethics for a five-year term commencing March 1st, 2014 and terminating on February 28, 2019. Be a further resolved the Town Board of Tampa Kips is hereby reappoint 
Robert Nasser to the Board of Ethics for a five-year term commencing on March 1st, 2014 and ter terminating on February 28, 2019. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby appoint Diane Levitt to the unexpired term of Susan Miller on the Historic Preservation Commission through April 19th, 2014. Second. So moved. Oops. <laughs> Second. Got to give me a chance. <laughs> <give me> a <laughs> Second. Any discussion? Yeah, Diane is actually a very good candidate. She's from the First Ward, and she <coughs> did our um, windscreen survey of the historic town that the Jean what? you said. The it, it, chains, yeah, you said? yeah, it's actually, she drove around the town and recorded before we had the actual survey done and recorded where the historic resources are. Oh. So yeah, she's very knowledgeable about the town and she's also restored a historic house in um, New Hamburg. New Hamburg. Yeah. So, yeah, she's very she's knowledgeable. And she was very active, um, I want to say back in the maybe the mid or early 90s and then she left the country for a few years and came back and wanted to get back on board and get active. She's very in the whole historical value of the town and keeping the town with a historical look and trying to keep everything in place to where it is. And she's got there and she had a phenomenal resume on top of that. Mm -hmm. Art conservator at Buckingham Palace. Research consultant Samuel F. B. Morris Estate. Research consultant Maple Grove. It, it's significant resume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's she very does. qualified. That's for sure. She really, she's a diehard. So, anything else? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes five zero. Be resolved. Town board, town of Kipsy, is thereby appoint Christine <clears throat> B. Soroselli to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a seven-year term, commencing January first, two thousand fourteen, and terminating on December thirty-first, two thousand twenty. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, actually, I think this appointment is a bit premature. I, I'm glad she's interested in working for the town, but we have a candidate already in place who's doing a great job. She has a good attendance record. She comes prepared. She's fair-minded, and she's only been given a four-year term. And I'd like to see her be given a full term so of her would, own. Yeah. And if not that, work to see that she's named as an alternate. Yeah, I would like, I agree with the alternate. And my view actually is I think the, it's, it's actually better to have alternates who are experienced because they may not be called on to serve every month. It may be, I mean, Paul right now has been serving every month because we've had a, a member that uh, has a, a serious illness, but they may serve one month and skip two or three, so to have someone with that experience uh, I think would be critical and a benefit for the alternates and, and uh, it would kind of push someone new to, uh, you know, take on that learning curve as, as Jim mentioned because there is a learning curve and uh, that's why I think it works best. This Can way. we modify this resolution to include appointing the alternate? Uh, Do we have to take an action on this because it's been seconded? We could always well, we got to move. Yeah, we got to talk to Jim about that. He said we could move the modify. Could amend it if you wanted. You could make a motion to amend. I'd like to amend it. Yeah. Okay. Make okay. make a uh, amendment. I'd like to make make an amendment that the alternative be the current member, Phyllis Capone. And uh, the alternates uh, serve four-year terms. So Phyllis's term would commence uh, January first, two thousand. 14 December and end uh, December 31st, 2016. No, not two eight, eight, eight. Four years 18, 16, 17. <coughs> 17. Well, 31, 17. Eight. That's all right with Phyllis, right? Correct. Okay. So, is there anyone? I shall move that. Is there anyone second that amendment? Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and oh, we have an amendment. So, uh, uh, all those in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, the amendment passes 5 0. And all those in favor of the amended uh, motion? Aye. 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 Nay. Okay. The motion passes 4 to 1. Yep. Yep. Be it resolved, the Town Board of the Town Poughkeepsie does hereby authorize the supervisor to execute a purchase and installation contract with T.G. Elliott Associates, Inc. for the sliding wall at the Town 
Senior Center at the cost of $16,000, which cost was the lowest of three quotes received by the Recreation Director, and it does further waive the requirement for a formal RFP because the Recreation Director has fully canvassed the limited market for these products and because the cost of preparing a formal specifications and issuing a formal RFP will be saved and be further resolved, the Town Board finds that this purchase and installation of the equipment is part of the Town's ongoing administration of the Senior Center and is a Type 2 action requiring no environmental review. Review So moved. Second. More than a second. Any discussion? Yeah. It's sixteen thousand dollars. What's the dollar limit before we have to do a, a bid, an RFP? Okay. Um, the basis for this resolution is Section One Hundred Four B uh, of the um, General Municipal Law, uh, which says that uh, for matters um, which do not require um, a formal bid, uh, towns have to have a process. Uh, and a town can adopt a process which uh, does away with the need to procure alternative quotations if you're under the limit. Uh, the limit in this case under state law is $30,000 for um, public works projects. Um, under our code, Mr. Carlos, you're, you're correct, the limit is considerably less than that uh, because it, it, not our code, our uh, procurement policy because it has not been updated. I think it may be twelve or $13,000. Basically what the town is doing, <laughs> pardon me for going on, oh, go on, is, go on. is within what I believe to be its authority under state law to uh, make a modification in this situation to the requirement for an RFP. And I anticipate that the board will be considering uh, a general modification to the procurement policies which will raise that limit so that we won't need to be doing this. Whether you'll adopt it or not, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, this money was in the budget, is in the budget. Um, so mm -hmm. anything else? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Be resolved that the Town Board of Town Poughkeepsie does hereby authorize the retention of Donald M. McGrath, MAI of McGrath Plus Company, Inc., at a cost not to exceed $1,500 to act as the appraiser for the Town of Poughkeepsie for the purpose of preparing a preliminary estimate of the cost of an easement to connect the existing country club sewer system to the existing Route 9 force main. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Whereas the town of Poughkeepsie has received notification that the 2014-2015 New York State budget includes a provision that would eliminate the corporate income tax on manufacturers for all of the state except for counties in the MTA region, including Dutchess County. And whereas this proposal will drive manufacturing jobs out of our communities, a manufacturing business in Dutchess County would pay a 6.5% corporate tax, while business in Ulster, Columbia County would have no corporate tax. And whereas the Poughkeepsie, Newburgh, Middletown metro area is one of only two New York regions to lose private sector jobs in 2013. And whereas proposals to split New York State into separate tax zones are divisive and pit New Yorkers against each other. And now, therefore, be resolved the town of Poughkeepsie memorializes the state of the Senate, the Assembly, and the Governor to include all of New York, including accountings in the MTA re region, and the elimination of the corporate tax and manufacturers. And be further resolved. The Town Board of Town Poughkeepsie is hereby authorized the Town Clerk to forward a copy of this resolution to New York State Senator Terry Gibson and New York State Assembly Member D.D. Barrett. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, I, I've spoken to Senator Gibson about this. He, he's uh, told me he, he'll, you know, uh, urge the governor to, you know, change the, or, you know, urge the, the legislature to change the, the budget. I think it's a ridiculous, you know, en mm -hmm. enough's been, I think the governor's trying to improve, you know, the, the western part of the state and, and, you know, up in that region, but it's going to start to be at the expense of, of our area. And we do have a manufacturer coming to the town of Poughkeepsie, uh, out of the city, and my concern, quite frankly, is that, you know, why would he come to the town? He, he can relocate to Ulster County and mm. avoid corporate tax. So mm. um, 
he's not looking at the big picture. He's looking at um, counties at a time, and he should be looking at the whole state of New York and mm -hmm. to repair the whole state because we know that big corporation down there off of Route 9 is slowly moving out here, and they're just getting more and more money from the state. So it's time that Albany wakes up, and whatever help we can get, we do need. Yeah. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby authorize the super to Supervisor to sign the 2014 Stop DWI Drug Recognition Expert Program contract with the County of Dutchess, copies of which are attached. So moved. Second. <laughs> Motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. That brings us to the end of our agenda. I'd like to make a motion to uh, suspend the rules for comments on town issues. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Is there anyone here to address the board? Doreen? Just a look. Yeah, I wanted to comment on the um, cell tower, Alexander Boulevard, and um, I believe this came up. I'd have to check my notes at home. I think it was about eight Come years before. ago. They yeah. wanted to put one in this particular location, and there were issues back then. So if Mr. Carlos hasn't, um, you know, if you weren't aware of that or if you want to look um, at the records from the planning department, I that would happen. I have no problem happen. with the tower as long as it's yeah. not higher than no, the trees. I'm, I'm just, just saying that, you know, you may want to um, to review what happened the, the first time around just so you can see what some of the residents' concerns were. The residents were. didn't want it. So... That's the part I remember. Right. Yep. So anyway, it was uh, quite a while ago, and uh, so probably needs to be uh, revisited. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Doreen. Anybody else? Jim. <coughs> I too just want to toss in another uh, thing to consider in, in the cell towers. Um, I don't quite understand why they can't locate on the the radio broadcast tower that's actually quite near All over. By. Yeah, they, I mean, well, you know, I I, I think cell phones and and AM radio work I, on way different yeah. frequencies. I think uh, they probably can. I think what she was trying to say, and I didn't want to say anything what they were saying, but I think they probably can. I think what they're thinking is they're giving us first bite at the apple, but if we you know, and, and we can't say no. We've said no in the past. But if, if we do say no, they'll offer that same money to a private yeah. person like the yeah. radio and station or someone over near Alexander and mm -hmm. put their I, yeah, tower I mean, on I, their I, property. I understand You're absolutely how, right. how important revenues are to the to the town budget. So, yeah. and, and along that line, I would, before you go too far, mm -hmm. check with a lot of other municipalities. I think the rents are going up. On, yeah. on these, okay. so we'll do that. You know, Thanks. If you go ahead with this, make sure you get <laughs> you you get some good revenue. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, Shane. Be resolved. The town board town of Kipps is hereby adjourned to executive session to consider the following matters to wit: one, litigation to discuss the litigation strategy of cases known as Ferrari; two, confidential communications between the attorney and client, the town board based on attorney client privilege and be it further resolved, there'll be no action, appropriate money. So moved. Second. Uh, we have a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Town board adjourns to exact session at 8 p.m. <laughs>